Now let's go to the International Criminal Court on the programme where prosecutors have accused an Islamist rebel from Mali of being an enthusiastic and jubilant participant in war crimes. Ali Hassan Ag Abdul Aziz was a key figure in the Ansar Adin Islamist group. He controlled the Islamic police in the city of Timbuktu for several years and has been accused of overseeing the abuse of civilians, particularly women forced into sexual slavery. Well, for more on his trial that's going on right now, Fernand Van Tetz joins me from Amsterdam. Fernand, uh, just tell us what's been happening in court today. So today it was closing statements. So we heard from the prosecutor, indeed, how he was an enthusiastic perpetrator who was shrouding his criminal goal in religion. Um, particular focus here today on the brutality inflicted on the population of Timbuktu after the 2012 takeover by Ansar Adin. Now, he headed the Islamic police, a force of around 40 men who would walk around the streets with Kalashnikovs, enforcing their rigid rules, bans on amulets, on drinking and smoking. We saw a video today of Al Hassan personally flogging a man 40 times for drinking alcohol. Also, documents were shown which he'd personally signed. Um, a police report saying also if torture was used and why, for example, to find out who had sold someone alcohol, but particular focus on women, on gender-based persecution, as the court said. Now, it said women and girls were the number one target for Ansar Adin and for his, the Islamic police. Um, they had even stricter rules on how to dress. They had to be completely veiled. Uh, in jail, there was a nightmare cell reserved for women where girls as young as 13, we heard, were raped for violations such as not wearing the veil correctly. And he oversaw this program of mass marriage, forced marriage to local women who would then be raped not only by their husband but often by other men as well. So that's where that enslavement charge comes from. So really someone brutalizing the population of Timbuktu during 2012-2013 and the prosecutors are hoping that they prove their case today that he should be put away um, by the judges. And Fernand, walk us through what we should expect in the coming days. So today it was the prosecution. We're still going to be hearing from the victims. Uh, they have um, some time tomorrow. There's a group of around 2,000 victims who are represented at the court. Their lawyer previously has said that uh, the reign of Ansar Adin turned the city into a ghost town. Uh, and, of course, we'll hear from the defense. Now, they have not denied that he was a member of Ansar Adin. Indeed, some of the um, Witnesses they've brought forward over the trial have actually confirmed this, but they say that he was just trying to enforce order in a chaotic time. They've also said that he was tortured while being held in Mali after he was captured by French forces in 2017. He was only handed over to the court in 2018, uh, and they've said that that is a reason why this case should be dismissed. That's also one of the reasons this has taken so long. Another thing that has thrown... Um, the spanner in the works, of course, is COVID that made it very tricky for the defense to um, uh, gather evidence on the ground in Mali. Um, so we're going to hear from them. They have four hours as well. And then it'll likely take several months for the judges to reach their decision. Um, but if they decide that he is guilty, he could go away for as much as 30 years. Fernand Van Tetz, thank you very much indeed.